Hey, welcome to this week's study guide. We don't have class this week because we have a meal together, but perhaps you'd want to sit down and go through this yourself. We are in a series called The Bread of Life, and today uh, our message is called A Meal to Remember. And we're talking about Jesus' establishment of what we call the Lord's Supper. Maybe you would call it communion. Catholics call it the Eucharist. And it's something that all of us tend to do as a, as a part of what Christ instructed us to do. But it's also something we understand a little differently. Today we went through that in the sermon, and uh, we just have a few questions to ask today, and I hope that you enjoy your time studying this passage. Here we are, we're in Luke chapter 22, we begin in verse 7. Remember Jesus had instructed his disciples to prepare for the Passover meal. The Passover meal was a, a meal that was from the Old Testament when the children of Israel came out of Egypt there was the Passover, that is when the death angel visited the Egyptians as one of the plagues that, that Pharaoh had to suffer so that the children of Israel would be released. And every door that had the blood of a lamb on it over the mantle of the door, that, that place, that home, the death angel would pass over that. And so the children of Israel were spared from the death and they were also released from the bondage. There's a great picture in Christ of the Passover, released from death, that we are released from bondage. And so Jesus has instructed his disciples where to prepare the Passover meal. And so we pick up the story and they're at the meal. Verse 7 of chapter 22. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Now that's interesting, there's a day of unleavened bread, and that's part of the Passover. We see that Jesus is going to institute the Lord's Supper on the day of unleavened bread as they prepared for the Passover meal. Where do you want us to prepare for it, they asked. He replied, as you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters and say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, all furnished, Make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them, so they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, Jesus and the apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat the Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks, and he said, Take this and divide it among you. For I will tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. He took the bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. And so we see Jesus instituting this meal. He tells them that they can eat it, that they can take part of it as often as they would. And whenever they did, they would do it in remembrance of him. So here we go into our questions. What connections does John 6, which we studied last week in a message titled The Bread of Life, what connections does John chapter 6, Jesus the Bread of Life, have with this Passover meal, which became the Lord's Supper? And so what connection does John 6 have with the bread in the Lord's Supper? Go ahead and spend some time thinking about that. We see that when Jesus told the disciples, all those who were following him, that they had to partake of him. They had to partake of his body in order to have eternal life. Remember, Peter said, you have the words of eternal life. People were confused, but they were also, they were also struggling because they wanted real bread. They didn't want spiritual bread. They wanted their bellies full. Jesus provides us spiritual nourishment so that we can live forever. And so that leads us to the second question then. In what way does the bread serve the Passover? In what way is that a picture of Christ in his crucifixion and resurrection? Well, we've talked about several things in the message. Remember that this bread was unleavened. There was no time to rise. Leaven represented sin. And so when there was no leaven in the bread, it was a sinless bread, so to speak. Jesus was sinless. 
we find that that bread was also pierced so that it would not rise. And so we see that there's little holes all through it. We remind ourselves that Jesus was pierced on his head and his hands and his feet and his side. And so like the bread, Jesus was pierced. We also find that on that, on that bread, there's stripes where it's grilled, basically. And just, just exactly like Isaiah predicted, Jesus would bear stripes on his body. We find that the bread that they served at the Passover was prepared in haste. They threw the ingredients together and put it in the oven quickly because they didn't have much time. We remind ourselves that Jesus died and they had to get him into the grave very quickly. We're reminded that that bread comes out of the oven and we're reminded that Jesus came out of the tomb. Fascinating to see the parallels and we're thankful today that Jesus is a fulfillment of that Passover and that in Jesus we have the forgiveness of sins, life everlasting, because he's the bread of life. That takes us to question three. Why do we then celebrate the Lord's Supper? The Lord's Supper is a meal that reminds us what Jesus did for us. He said, as often as you do this, remember me. And so we're reminded that Jesus is the bread of life, that the bread that we have of him, that is eternal spiritual life, is more important than our physical life. So every time we come to that table, we're reminded that the spiritual nourishment is more important than the physical. We're also reminded of what Jesus did, which should create in us a desire to worship him. It should remind us of the confidence that we have in him because he gives us eternal life through his sacrifice. We're reminded that's what sin does. Sin brings death, and our sin brought death to Jesus Christ. We also know that there is, there is an edification. That means it builds us up and strengthens us when we come to that. Not necessarily physically, but it should be a spiritual uplifting experience when we come to the table. That's why we celebrate. Fourthly, what does it mean to you when you celebrate it? Do you enjoy it? Does it mean something to you? Is it a special time? Are you grasping the significance of it? Talk about that. Communion means a lot to me because I got saved during a communion service at a church camp. I knew that day that I, that I was a sinner. It just really dawned on me. I thought I was always a good kid. I remembered then that I wasn't. And as I kneeled down there at an altar to receive communion at that camp, I asked Jesus to forgive me. I realized what that broken bread and what that cup meant. And I asked Jesus the best I knew how to forgive me of my sins. And so it means a lot to me. I hope it means a lot to you. Finally, what did Christ want us to receive by eating of the supper? What is it he wants us to receive? Why should we eat it? We've kind of answered that, but dig into it. What does he want you to take from that meal? Well, I believe we come to the table and Christ wants us to be strengthened spiritually, to be reminded that we have forgiveness of sins, to be reminded that we have eternal life, to re be reminded of how much he loved us, to be reminded of what sin cost. He wants us to be strengthened by the encouragement to know that he is the source of eternal life. It's not our own works. It's nothing else. It's not religion. It is him. And so at the table, we're reminded that Jesus is the one who provides exactly what we need. And in that, I hope that you find strength and comfort and encouragement, and certainly an exhortation to worship him who gave us so much. God bless you. Thank you for joining us.